Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. I've got my buddy Ryan out here with me today and we are headed out to do some fall power fishing. Come along, it should be a really fun day. This time of year, we talk a lot about patterning fish. Uh, we've talked how as the air temps drop, the nighttime temperatures drop, grass has been dying back and the fish really get on that hard cover. However, there are pockets in the south where that does not necessarily apply. Tim and I talk to the core of the country as much as possible. But today we are down on the TVA system and here the grass is healthy. So today we're doing something completely different. We're targeting fish around an incredible amount of grass. We will be power fishing, flipping, frogging, maybe throwing a soft jerk bait, maybe top water, but it will be all power fishing geared towards grass fishing. We'll be breaking down these giant expanses of grass, trying to dial in the areas that attract the fish because the fish are not in all of it. Uh, and the catchable fish are in very small sections. And that's what we're doing today. With that, let's get to fishing. Starting off with that frog. Just got her on that green pumpkin Berkeley frog. Nice fish. Nice work, man. Thanks, man. Got him. That fish absolutely choked that Kara. Look at that thing. Down the hatch. That one was completely in open water. He almost jumped back in the boat. <laughs> completely in open water on this grass edge. He came out to feed. Ryan is throwing up inside into the pockets and the thick stuff, and I'm fishing those outer edges with that smaller natural frog. We've been on the water a couple of hours now. We've each landed one frog fish and we've both had a bunch of missed opportunities or at least short strikes. I don't know if I'd call them missed opportunities because the fish are just in a weird mood. They're blowing up, they're missing, they're coming up and swirling. Probably a combination of the cloud cover and the heavy wind. We're in a pocket right now where it's calm, but out on the main body, out on the big open grass flats. I mean, it's just rolling out there. It's really rough. So we'll probably have to start adapting here in a minute. We've been pushing that frog bite, pushing it, but we're probably gonna have to start adapting. We'll see. But first I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about the grass thing. Like I said in the beginning, for a lot of people, that is now off the table. But if you're in a part of the country where grass is still a major deal your grass is healthy the fish are in it we didn't want to neglect that so i wanted to take a minute and talk to that so that you're prepared for fishing through the fall in that grass and the big thing with grass is understanding where fish are in it because it can be incredibly overwhelming 
and my advice to you will be different depending on the size of the lake that you're on and how often you fish there. Uh, for the guy who's just on like a little pond, let's say sub three or four acres, okay? Just fish it all. No joke, just cast as far as you can and fish it all. Uh, once you get larger than that, let's say, you know, five acres up to 500 plus acres. Now we start talking about needing to pay attention to the types of grass. Uh, you know, and grass edges, of course, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's talk about the types of grass. Now, we won't get into the specifics of like, this grass is called this, this grass is called that. That's irrelevant. All you need to know is that grass where two kinds of grass come together. So, you know, maybe a hydrilla meets anything else, some cheese, whatever. Where two kinds of grass come together, bass will use that edge just like they will use a hard shoreline edge. So if you're in a smaller body of water and you don't understand, you know, the whole thing cheeses out and you don't understand where to go or what to do, understanding that where those two types of grass come together is the deal. You're looking for those hard edges where they meet. And you can fish them again, just like a shoreline. Now, on a big fishery, the number one thing that I like to do, and today's a perfect example, we've, dr we've dropped into this lake for one day. We're just down here having some fun. When you do that, the easiest thing to do is fish the outermost grass line. You can either fish the outermost or the innermost, but it's hard for you guys to see how much grass is here today because of the waves. You really can't even see the cheese. There's miles and miles and miles and miles of cheese. I mean, I don't know how much, hundreds of miles of cheese. It's incredible how much grass there is. So the easiest thing is to go to that outermost edge and just parallel that and fish into the pocket. So when we're fishing those edges, the actual grass edge where the grass comes out, it breaks the deeper water and the grass stops. And then beyond that is hard bottom. When we're fishing those edges, we're looking for any anomalies in the edge. So it's typically not going to be a perfect straight line. Typically it's gonna have some shift to it. So anywhere where a grassy point sticks out, or a little grassy pocket goes in, those are what you're looking for. Or a clump that's out off the edge by itself. Any of those anomalies, the things that stand out, fish will use those places to ambush bait. They'll sit on those outer edges and blow up on it, and they'll use those little pockets to drive bait into and attack it. Now, the only other thing I'll say is that if you're on a lake a lot, like if this is your home lake and you're trying to understand how to break down grass, there's a whole other level to this thing. And that's how you break down the giant expansive grass flats. And again, if you're just on it for a day or two, don't even bother. Fish the outer edge or the inner edge and you'll do great. But if you really want to break down a fishery and find those biggest fish, this is where really good mapping comes into play. I'm pointing back here to my hummingbird behind the screen. When you've got really good mapping, you can sit down and look at a giant cheese field, right? Because it's all the same. It's just, it's just grass. But if you sit and stare at your map, you can find low spots and high spots in there. You can find where creek channels cross it and they're completely eaten up by the grass, right? There might be an old ditch completely covered by grass. It looks just like everything else. But if you really wanna break it down, if you wanna find those big ones, I spend a lot of time sitting, staring at my map, looking for places where deeper water is underneath that cheese or underneath that grass. The fish will navigate that like a highway underneath that grass. You can't tell the difference at all from above, but from below, they've got a highway in there and they will use that, they will feed. And that can be, it depends on the lake. If you're on a little lake, that can be a six inch difference, right? But it can also be a 10 foot difference. 
But even on a giant reservoir, if there's a foot to two feet of change, if it dips into a little pocket, or if you've got an old creek channel and it gives you a couple of extra feet of depth, that can be the difference between that grass being solid from top to bottom and having a void underneath it where those fish can travel easily. And that makes all the difference in the world. So if you really want to break down the grass on your fishery, whether that's fall or any other time, that's how you really do it to dial in the biggest fish. But today, we're not going to worry about any of that. Today, we're mostly fishing edges and pockets in the grass. We're just going to cover a ton of water. Again, we've started out with the frog. We'll probably throw some other stuff now as well, but we're just going to keep going. What were you about to say? By the time the water is gotten, you got to Darn it! Oh. Something with the way these fish are eating today. They're just, they're in a funk. I was able to load up on him, but I just, I just never had him. That was on the black and blue. That Navy seal, I love that color. I mean, he blasted it, he was there, but he wasn't really there. It's, some days are like that. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. On that popping frog. Golly. Whoa, that's a good fish. Nice work, man. Big head. Big head. That fish ate it like it was a giant. <laughs> Big head, skinny body. He wanted it though. That was awesome. Got it, got it in there. I'm starting to actually eat it now. They probably couldn't see that because we were turned, but Ryan was burning in and that fish blew up on a frog that was burning on top. He followed up and got it. Yeah. And that fish followed that thing. I saw a wake come up under the frog. I had walked off a grass edge, coming out across the open water. I saw a wake and then nothing. That fish let me go another five or six feet and then just fully committed and blasted that thing. <laughs> Good job. He just slurped it down. Nice one. Such a subtle bite. We had planned on giving up the frog. We were going to go flipping. And we may still, but you guys can probably hear the wind. We're in the calmest water we can find. It's blowing over our heads out offshore. So this is the calm stuff. It's so rough out where the outer grass edge is, we just can't even do it. But hopefully it lays down. We can go out and do some flipping as well. But if they're willing to eat the frog, something has changed in the last 30 to 45 minutes. They've gone from playing with it, slapping at it, blowing up but missing, to just 
fully committing to that thing. Now we're getting into some fish. Oh, Get out of there. Look at how he's got this eaten. That's what we want to see. Just down the hatch. Perfectly pegged. Roof of the mouth. Awesome. That fish was buried. Proper gear is everything when you're frogging or grass fishing in general. You know, whether you're throwing a soft jerk bait, a topwater, a frog, you're flipping, you need heavy gear to horse those fish out of the really thick stuff. If you're probing the edges, you can do that with light gear. We even do it with bait finesse rods, right? Six and seven pound fluoro and you sort of feather them and let them swim out. But when they're in that thick stuff and you get them, you've got to have the right gear. This is a from Shimano in the X-Pride line. This doesn't surprise anybody. We've used this rod for ever. 7.3 extra heavy 65 pound braid. That's suffix 832. I've got that on a metanium because I can send that thing literally to the bottom of the spool. I can, I can throw that thing until I see my knot down there. It's incredible. And then we're throwing a variety of frogs. One of the interesting things today is, you know, when Tim and I bring friends with us, everybody we bring is a talented angler, right? That, that goes without saying. And we're blessed to fish with some amazing fishermen. Ryan is a hammer. When we got out here, we had a plan to frog and flip. I showed up with three frog rods. He showed up with a couple. And it was interesting that our color selections were night and day different. And I'm throwing bluegill, chartreuse, uh, and then, you know, the shaddy colors, like the glittery silvers. Ryan's throwing green pumpkin, bone, uh, and then I ultimately switched over to that black and blue as well. But just two uniquely different approaches to the same fishery, same pattern, but just tweaking it a little bit. And it's been a fun experience to watch when he's getting bit versus when I'm getting bit uh, and just seeing those color differences. I'll probably add some more bone frogs back into my lineup because I've kind of simplified my color selections. But there's been some times where there were no question fish were coming farther for his frog than they were for mine. Yep. There it is. Nice work. <laughs> that was in the middle of that thick stuff, huh? Yeah, little guy. But he got that hooked. How do you want him hooked? Look at that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you could have let him swim around all day. <laughs> Oh, that's a nice one. That'll work. Good job. Look at that bronze eye down in there, just choked. That fish massacred that frog. That was awesome. We made a move. The water we landed in is significantly clearer than where we've been, maybe two, two feet of his. So I went to a more natural colored frog, a little bit of a bluegill profile. That was the first bite, it was the right bite. That fish 
just choked the Kara. We were working this grass edge and they came up chasing some bait fish. Fired that frog out there completely open water and he just grenaded it. I went the wrong way, go over me. Oh, I went the wrong way too. Good one? You got me in the grass. He went down. Yeah, he went down and vlogged me in the grass. Oh, top water? <laughs> There. Got these open water fish going now. That's that Duo Realis pencil, but that's the silent version. Checking my phone. Nice fish. Okay. It's on that spro pop. Good one. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up here. This this ending was a perfect example of why fall fishing is so much fun. You know, we came out here with a plan today. Uh, we wanted to fish heavy cover. Our forecast was uh, partly cloudy skies to sunny skies blowing five to 10. As you've seen, what we really got was heavy overcast blowing 15 to 25. I mean, not ideal frog fishing conditions whatsoever, not ideal flipping conditions with the heavy overcast, but we were still able to adapt and overcome. Instead of fishing outside edges like we had planned, we went and fished inside edges, which proved to be extremely successful. And we caught a lot of really nice fish on those frogs. Uh, and then right here at the end, pull up to fish one more grass line, see a fish, actually it was a group of fish, chasing in open water through that Kara out there, get that good one. And then we know that we don't wanna be throwing a frog out in completely open water on busting fish if we have a choice. So we both reached for a top water and just got that flurry going. And that's fall, right? They are chasing, they're aggressive. And if you happen to cross paths with that, you can start catching those fish just one after another. Today turned out to be an absolute blast. It was not the conditions we expected, uh, but I'm really glad that we got to talk through fishing that grass, right? Whether or not 
I mean, ignore the fishing itself. We caught a bunch of really nice fish today. We had a blast. It was fun to get out together. But what you need to focus on was those details about finding fish in grass. Because you can apply that now, or if you're on a fishery where the grass has already started dying back, you can apply that next year. But dialing in that grass, understanding how the fish move around it, oh, got him, makes all the difference in the world. And then you can just go out there and have fun like this. This is what it's all about. Get out of the way of those treble hooks. Oh, nice fish, too. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to end it with that one right there. So much fun. Thanks for coming, Ryan. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We had a blast, guys. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.